I really think that the bicycle is the best way to explore new places, and I think that anybody um, can find a bike to use and can have access to a really wonderful trip where you get to engage with the places that you're visiting on a really different level than any other form of transportation. So let me introduce you to my friends. At the top, that's Adrian, and then the guy in the middle is George, and at the bottom, that's me, I'm Travis. Um, this is at the top of a really big hill, and when we got to the top of the hill, there was another car driving up and stopping and jumping up, and looking at the view, and then getting back in their car and driving off. And it was really nice to sit there for a little while and watch people come and go and stop, and Take a really quick look at the view and be like, all right, let's keep going, we gotta make it to LA or whatever. We got to sit for a and enjoy it. It's great. Um, oh, yeah, the first thing I wanna talk about, um, I can tell you to, you know, pack leg and um, pack your panties from the opposite side of your bike. Um, I can tell you to, to choose a safe route. I can tell you all about trip planning and all of those things. Um, but I'm gonna tell you, Three secrets that I learned on my tour. Secret number one is choose your pals. Make sure that the people that you're cycle touring with are people that you feel comfortable with, um, that have similar goals to you, um, that want to kind of explore in the same way. You don't have to live with them for three months before you leave, like I did. But, <laughs> but definitely go on a little trip with them. Um, make sure their, their bikes are working all right, and get to get to experience traveling along with them and, and exploring somewhere. Um, and try to bring your own tent, so you don't have to share with this guy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It was a pleasure to see the tent. Um, that's George and Adrian. Be prepared for the unexpected. Talk to strangers. That's lesson number two. Um, you're not going to end up in situations that are um, testing you, that are uncomfortable, that are exciting, unless you get out there and talk to some people. In this particular case, I know we're going to ban, which I guess against the rules, but. <laughs> but um, in this particular case, I and I were sitting outside this shopping center um, and we were eating barbecue from this promotion guy who was promoting his product and who we like, got to know and he was giving us really good slice of steak. And we were listening to this great folk music that a couple of old people from town were playing at the entrance and all of a sudden he comes out of the grocery store and he's, he's like, we're going with this person, we're going to get in our van and we're going to drive up the street to the best friend's place. And we're like, oh, we're just relaxing, what's going on? It's crazy. <laughs> so we get all that stuff and throw it in the back of the van um, and drive like 20 minutes up this windy road and we end up staying with this gentleman named Randy and he lived in a really nice little trailer home um, and he shared, he shared his fire, he shared um, a spot for us to camp in his yard. He washed our clothes for us, and he shared his favorite swimming spot the next morning, which was right across the way. And that's beautiful. Or there's no way we would have found this place if we hadn't started talking to him or talking to somebody in the, in the store. Ask people. Ask people. Ask people on the floor. If you're really, really confident, and sure enough, people will give you spots to see. So that's rule number two, not rule, secret number two. <laughs> secret number three is plan explore, or explore plan B. Plan B is often much more exciting and rewarding than plan A. And if you wait it out a little bit, probably too long, then 
really, really great and amazing things happen. We were riding along the road, and we started chatting to this woman who was selling firewood or pie, I can't remember, and we've had arguments about it since. And she, we were asking about places where we could sleep around the Washington coast. And she said, just go down a little ways and turn right down this kind of really small little dirt path, go all the way to the end of the path, um, and you can hike down this cliff to the beach. And so we did what she told us, and ended up trying to stuff off this cliff and like climbing down. <laughs> dangerous. Where is that path? It's just on the Washington coast. On the peninsula? Can you say it the same beach? <laughs> this is a, a warehouse that we were riding along and we saw on the side of the road. It was like abandoned and there's a whole bunch of old stuff in there. So we wandered around and checked it out and just got a little bit spooky. Um, along the lines of waiting for a plan B, this is um, at sunset. We I just kept going a little bit farther, trying to find that really magical spot. <laughs> A little bit farther, a little bit farther, a little bit farther, and then we found it. And um, there's a whole other story about this spooky beach that we camped on, but we ended up sitting and eating dinner together as the sun was setting on this like wonderful, wonderful spot. <coughs> Did I say there was three lessons? Yes. Secrets. Secrets. Well, in fact, there are four. It's a secret secret. It's a secret secret. <laughs> Make stuff. Find stuff. Strap stuff to your bike. Um, during, over the course of the trip, I fab fabricated this sleeping bag out of garbage I found. And off the side of the road, I built a knife. Um, we made this beam. Which I'll have up front that you're welcome to come and take a look at if you have clean hands, the hard copy. Um, and if you're interested in having a copy yourself, then I can um, get your email address and forward you that PDF. Um, yeah, make things. Strap things to your bike. Make yourself look kind of out of the ordinary so that people come and chat with you. And make <laughs> Um, this is the last little leg of our journey. We were riding through the desert, and we planned it so that we were riding only in the dusk or at night because it was too hot during the day. Um, and Adrian got a flat one morning right after we had breakfast, and I just thought it was the most outrageous place to get a flat. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I hope that you guys are all excited to get on your bikes and ride somewhere. If you have questions, we're going to have three people who have gone on tour down the West Coast come up, and you're welcome to ask all three of us um, about whatever you want. Can you questions with you right now? Sure. I don't have one. So you said the one thing you were going to talk about was packing um, I would guess heavy stuff next to you, as close to the side of your bike as possible. But I guess I was talking about if you put your panniers on and you want to pack or like mess around with stuff while your panniers are on your bike, it's much easier to like lean over top of your bike and work on the other the opposite side um, uh, than it is to work on the side that you're on because then you're trying to hold the bike up and load it and fall. <laughs> Yeah. Was there a whole ton of stuff that you brought? You guys were pretty well loaded there. That you just you just totally could have gone with that. Yeah, the bags were very well organized and packed at the start of the trip. <laughs> As we went on and, and uh, rode for a while and set up and repacked, our bags kind of started to look just like we just kind of started throwing things on, <laughs> stuffing them. Uh, it's not as important as. Was there anything that just got lost in the bottom that, and it didn't matter because you never went looking for it and you never found it, but you didn't care? You just fight with it every day? Um, Probably. Yes. What? The mouth. Ah. 
quinoa is good. It doesn't take as long to cook, which is really nice. Just a more nutritional value. We just had a little gas stove, like one of those. Whisper light. Whisper light, yeah. Whisper light. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we figure it out just kind of before we started the day or in the middle of the day when we took breaks. We'd sometimes like stop in libraries and see if there's anything sweet up ahead. But I think most of the time we just went. So, um, George and Adrian did a lot more planning than me, I think. Um, I was the person egging us on to go to like a little bit farther and fill into this darkness. <laughs> what what would you say? Did we plan anything before we left? Did we do research? Um well Pacific Coast mostly you have one road that you're on. So yeah. it doesn't need a lot of planning in the sense that you could you could get away with just like county maps if you want, if you needed a map. But otherwise, yeah, I think, I think each day we, we figured out where we wanted to go to in that day. In that moment, we figured it out rather than figuring out the month prior where we were going to be. That allowed us to do some really cool stuff. There was this one spot. Um, I don't remember what the town was called. S Susan? No. Where are we? The mouth of the river there? Susan? No. We, we ended up at the mouth of this thing at night with some people who had a hot tub and they helped us get high. <laughs> so nice. Um, and then in the morning we got up and we decided that we were going to ride in, like uh, off the coast. And we started the morning standing at the edge of this, the edge of the mouth of this river. And there was some sea lions playing in the river. And like fishing, and we were just like standing there, really nice, really early. And we got on our bikes and we rode. We pretty much followed the river all the way up, um, and the road was kind of a danger zone, so right up against the edge of the river all the way. Um, but it was so cool because by the end of the day, we were at a completely different, in a different climate, pretty much, but on the same river, and we camped right on the river. And we would have never, like, we would have never planned to do that. It's just kind of what happened that day. So do you hear it off the coast in places? We stayed pretty much on the coast. Um, we took the ferry to Victoria, um, and then we stayed on the coast all the way down the Olympic Peninsula, and then we went through the uh, coast. Oregon, and then right when we went into California, we turned and went up to Lake Junction, and then Ashland, and then kind of down through Central California. Oh wow! Into Nevada. The Trinity National Forest. We stopped at Lassen Park. Okay. So we did. How close did you get then to Burning Man? That was Burning Man is your destination. I guess. We rode into Burning Man. You rode right in? Yeah. Okay. And were there supplies that you specifically brought for Burning Man, like costumes? Michael Harry brought all the supplies. <laughs> <laughs> so you would have had those? He, he was in a, in a truck. He was going down there. Oh. With some friends there. So he met us there. And had stuff to drive. And what district were you?
six, and the rest of the time we camped on the beach or in places that were flat. <laughs> some of the nights we stayed um, on people's lawns, some nights we stayed um, in people's beds, and some nights we kind of just found a spot that was out of town, that was on the water, and set up our Yeah? Did you ever wake up at those things right away when the woke up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at, at Rusty's place. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe I can get Travis and Emily up here to help answer some questions. Because <coughs> they both also both been on the West Coast. And anybody else who feels like they'd like to. Can you just tell me about the spooky beach? <laughs> Maybe, I'll so spooky? About, Maybe I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> Yeah, it's not the best. 
it's pretty it's pretty windy and there's not a big shoulder. And, um, just like one minute back up either way. So I mean when we went there wasn't a lot of traffic, you know, a lot of tourists and stuff. Going Which area is this? Pardon? Northern California. Northern. It's past the Redwoods, mm -hmm. and then there's a little. Arcata. Past Arcata. South of there. South of Arcata. Yeah. Where's the money? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's basically, where the like where the 101 comes in and. It's, What's the weed capital? The Mendocino is it near Mendocino. Mendocino. It's past Mendocino, like okay. maybe 50 miles. Did yeah. you guys get given anything? Oh yeah. What did you get in there? Did you get given anything? We went to this little town called Casper, and it's really, really small, but there's tons of uh, wine oats. <laughs> <laughs> there's like every shop serves wine, or it's like a little, has just a wine store, and then it's a country home everywhere. And we stopped and we were like, it's getting dark, it's maybe 5.30 at night, and we are like, hey, do you know where we can camp? And uh, this nice old man told us, um, there's a little spot off the road. And he gives us, he's like, oh, I have all this wine. I don't know what to do. He's like, I don't know. all this wine. Do you want some bottles of wine? He gives us like three, three quarter full bottles of wine. I can't sell these. Okay. Give them up. I can't sell these. That's cute. And then the spot he told us, we couldn't make it there. It's too dark. And get through the road. So we just ended up pulling off to the side. We're like, this will do. And it was kind of squishy to the ground. I'm like, whatever. Like, we wake up in the morning. And it's totally like a manure work yard. <laughs> <laughs> like that is for sure the worst place we slept. <laughs> Our stuff had like manure on it for a couple days. Pretty bad. <laughs> and I used to set up when there's like awesome. Those are just that big. 
Everybody has their own path. Yeah. <laughs> How did you guys get back? Train. Train? I took a train from San Francisco. I got a ride to Oakland and I flew to Sweden from Oakland. With my bike. And nothing else. <laughs> Well, you explained, I just heard about Green Tortoise uh, on Wednesday, and it sounded pretty pretty wild. Like, all the seats go down, oh, yeah, it stops benches. At, yeah, you get on the bus in San Francisco and you go all day, and then it pulls in, and then, well, then they flip down all the seats, and everyone sleeps, and it kind of turns into a sleeping bus, and then it stops in the morning, meets another bus at this place, and, and then they prepare the beautiful breakfast and go on to Seattle. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to box the bike. Although the, the, the catch point of view is you have to box it when you get to Seattle. <laughs>
and the bike, there's just too much weight in the bike, and it wasn't mm -hmm. like, you know, I guess, rule goes, you know, there's no, there's no, like, poles for the Premier Act, it's probably not a good idea to go on that bike. <laughs> so we ended up taking a bus into, because we ran out of tubes and patches. <laughs> <laughs> so we patches on this one, this poor tube. We took a bus into Olympia, and he, he basically, like, built a bike in two days. I have a question about footwear. Footwear that um, you make. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have. <laughs> I'm asking you two, and I can share as well. I wore shoes like this. Really? And the whole time I was playing around with building um, like power straps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was building a lot of like pieces of um, like those old inflatable air mattresses, <laughs> which my panties were also built out of, and uh, they worked really great. Cool. Yeah, I just bolted to the side. Yeah. I found a pair of those clipping shoes at the thrift store at for like seven bucks. I never find shoes that fit me. Ah, like, oh, sweet. And then. I did too, and sandals. Um, so I had the two pairs of footwear. But now, I'm, it's, it's a controversial idea, but I wear hiking boots to tour. And I started when I biked down to a permaculture course in Eugene because I'm like, I don't want to pack hiking boots and take half my canyon. I have big canyons. Um, <laughs> And so now, and, but they, they, they're nice because they have a like, solid shame, like a, a bike can shoe does. So you have that like, direct power. But a lot of people are like worried that, you know, it's within strict with angle rotation. I don't know. But, like, you know, the high, the high top. But compared to, but then you can like go hiking, you can do, you can do anything. You can do so many sandals. And you can get them without pulling this for too. Yeah. This is a rack that I used riding down the <laughs> west coast, and I'd like to give it to somebody who's going on a trip. Does anybody need it? In, anybody? That's a front rack, isn't it? Yeah, it's a front rack. Nobody? Those are sweet. It's, it's like a, a, a rack, so you can put pennies on, on the front. So I, on the other side of the fork, yeah. And I, I had um, like a water bottle on one side with a, one of those um, Camelback things that went up my handlebar. Okay.